All right, hello and welcome. My name is Jason Welsh, and uh, welcome to Stop Frame Animation with Adobe Photoshop CS3. Now, they do have this for Adobe Photoshop CS4, which is current, but uh, unfortunately, I do not have CS4 at work as of yet. So I'm going to have to teach you in CS3 how this is done. Tips. Okay, after you get done with this video, my students are required to actually make a stop video, uh, stop frame animation using, well, let's say, 12 shots or something like that. Um, so, the first thing you have to do is A, take and uh, format the video card, okay? So when you're in your camera, uh, just format the video card. That way it starts out with a new sequence of pictures. All those new sequence of pictures start out with one, two, three, four, or five. If you already have pictures on there, it makes it incredibly difficult to do this. So make sure you format your card first. B or two, make sure you have it on JPEG, okay? Not NEF files or RAW. So it must be able to capture JPEGs with your camera. Now high def all the way. You know, I mean highest megapixel you can get. There is no limit for megapixels on this, if, and there's no limit to anything really because you're using a camera, not a video camera. So that's really nice. Think about your exposure ratios, your aperture settings, how long it takes to actually expose it, and you can get all kinds of cool, interesting lighting effects with this stuff. Uh, like each frame of this, actually, it took like almost one minute to um, expose because I used a very high aperture setting and a very low shutter speed. Okay, so um, that's it. All you do now is watch this video and basically I'm going to walk you through the steps of getting Photoshop CS3 to act like Photoshop CS4 to make your workflow a lot easier. Since Photoshop CS3 does not have the capabilities of importing all images onto separate layers, there's a script that I have put on my server that I found on the internet at www.houseoftutorials.net slash lesson files. It is called stack script. Now, if you are watching this video inside my classroom, check where the video is at and you're going to find the very same script. Do not go on the internet and download the script. It's in the folder. Okay, next, what do I do with the script? Well, that's easy. So here's the script after it's been unzipped. So if I double click that, I get this. You're going to have this inside my classroom. So I'm going to copy this and place it within my applications directory, Photoshop CS3, presets, scripts, edit, paste. And you should have it in here. It's called load files into stack. Now this does not magically appear in Photoshop. You must restart Photoshop in order for it to show up in the scripts list. So we're going to be using my sequence of images to actually pull this off and then you the student are going to end up doing one of these. Uh, the sequence of actual images, let me show you what directory you're looking at for those they are located here called sequence and there should be 10 images in it okay so now let me show you what you're going to do with the 10 images in Photoshop so launch Photoshop okay so next what we do is import our files and what we do is go into file scripts load files from stack. We choose the images that I have on the hard drive and hit open. Hit OK. And this might take some time. What it's doing is basically stacking all the actual frames onto you know individual layers on the same document. Okay. There we go. It looks amazing. 
And what I want to do is keep it looking amazing, but the only bad thing is if this is an animated GIF, I have to make it sh make sure that it's web friendly. So before I go into animating things, I want to make sure that it's web friendly. Okay, that means what I do is go to image, image size, knock this down to 72 resolution, and then the width of 640. I let the height become whatever it wants to be because constraint proportions are on. Okay, now it, it'll be much faster for me to do this within the video. You notice a lot of the quality is now gone, however. Okay, next, since every student must do this, and I have to kind of prove that each student did it, what I want to do is put a text block in the corner here with your name. Okay, and then you can move that right off in the corner. It can be very small. You just have to have proof that you did it. Okay, now open up the animation. That is located under Window Animation. I move this up. And there's two different kinds of animation within Photoshop. There is frame animation and there's timeline animation. So you can toggle between the two by clicking here on this little button you want frame animation which looks a lot like this. Underneath the minus key there's this little drop down. Choose make frames from layers. And there we go. Okay now it also took the text frame and put that in there. So what I want to do is put the text frame on the very first frame and then also I want to reverse the sequence. This is why it's very important to only use you know 11 or 12 frames because for some odd reason it wants to always go backwards. So for each frame I have to click and drag that into a new sequence so it, it's not playing backwards. And you know you're doing this right by the time you get to the last frame. There we go. And if I hit play, I have this. All right, now let me show you how animation works. So on this frame right now, you notice that this eyeball is on. But, however, this frame, the eyeball is off. So that's how this frame animation works. It works by turning these eyes on and off. It works a little bit um, different. Uh, there's an a few other little tricks along the way but basically that's that's how it's done so what I want to do is for each one of these frames probably turn this eye on for the text kind of just want to show you how that worked so that's a cheap and dirty way of doing it I guess okay there we go another thing is it's playing incredibly too fast so for those I want to take and put this to point two. Point two, point two, two. Just like that. Now you're gonna have to mess around with whatever seconds that you might need for your video. Uh, if you wanna vary it up, it looks kinda sweet too. Okay, I like it, but on frame one, it goes completely black. See, Dude, there's a flash. That will show up really bad. So I want to actually delete frame one out. I do that by clicking on the frame and hitting delete. And there we go. To save it for the web, all you do is have to go file, save for web devices, and make sure this is on GIF or GIF. Go ahead and hit save and I'm going to call this example 2 and make sure there's a GIF after it and hit save. Again there is no limit to uh, the amount of light or anything you, you know, or experimentation there is involved in this. This is not a video camera. This is an actual digital Nikon D80 uh, but you can use you know point and shoot. You can use anything that you can put on a tripod 
but the very important thing to understand is your aperture and exposure settings you know you can play around with that and let more light in for each frame uh, I think I mentioned this before but for each frame it took probably like a minute no about 20 30 seconds or something like that to actually expose because I had a very um, high aperture so everything would be in focus so think about that how much you can actually play around with don't just use your automatic settings on your camera play around with uh, the manual settings on your camera and get better effects that way okay again my name is Jason Welsh and have a good one uh, for students in my class, welcome to your assignment. Find something to animate. And for those people on the internet, play around, experiment. That's the only way to learn. Have a good one.